Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Here's your host, Cyrus Webb. Welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. But for our radio audience here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com, we're glad that you all could be with us. I was tuning in to our friends at iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcast. We're glad you all could join us as well. This is part of our news news segment here at WYAD, and today we're talking about Blood Cancer Awareness Month. Among other things, September is recognized as Blood Cancer Awareness Month. It's an opportunity for us to be able to honor the more than 1 million people in the U.S. U.S. living with or in remission from blood cancers. Biomaker testing is an important tool that doctors can use to find the right treatment for certain types of cancers, like AML, which is a difficult-to-treat cancer of the blood and bone marrow. Because many, many patients today have never heard of these advancements in testing and the emergence of targeted therapies, it's important to advocate for yourself and ask the right questions to find out what biomaker tests are available for you. And because of that, we have two very special guests that are joining us today. We have Dr. Aiden Stein joining us, as well as Shirley, who's living with AML. They're going to talk to us not only about AML, but also where you all can get more information. Thanks to the two of you for the time. Really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Dr. Stein, I want to start with you. For those, as we are recognizing a Blood Cancer Awareness Month, they may be wondering what is AML. What exactly is it? And talk to us about the mutations of it. Sure. So um, acute myeloid leukemia, or AML, as you said, is a difficult-to-treat cancer of the blood and bone marrow, and it's really one of the most common types of leukemia in adults. An estimated 21,000 people in the United States this year are going to be diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia, and the incidence of this disease tends to increase as people age, so the median age of diagnosis is 68 years old. It occurs when a mutation, meaning something goes awry, in the DNA of a type of white blood cell in the bone marrow, and that mutation leads to the uncontrolled growth of these white blood cells, and that is what cancer is. Cancer is the uncontrolled growth of cells, in this case, white blood cells, um, and that's what causes the disease. So what we look for is we look for specific mutations by biomarker testing that we can potentially target with our therapies. Have you found, Dr. Stein, to kind of stay with this topic, have you found that finding the targeted treatment has really been the key when it comes to cancers like AML? It, you know, it really is, and I'll tell you why. You know, what we used to do with this disease is we used to give traditional chemotherapy. Chemotherapy non-specifically kills all rapidly dividing cells. It kills cancer cells. It kills healthy cells. And that's why people would get a lot of side effects from traditional chemotherapy. When you can give a targeted therapy, which is sort of like putting um, a key in a specific lock, um, every cancer has its own key. When you can identify that key, you can come up with what the best treatment is for the cancer. You can give that targeted therapy. You can hopefully um, more appropriately target those cells and avoid side effects like you might get with chemotherapy. I love that analogy with the, the key and the lock. That's something I think our audience can definitely appreciate. Shirley, I really appreciate you being with us today. If you don't mind, tell us about your own diagnosis with AML, how, how you found out and what it's been like for you. Well, 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with MDS, myelodysplastic syndrome, and it progressed to AML, acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, I was a retired university professor at the time, and I took it on as a major research project that was very, very personal to me and quickly realized that no one was going to do this job for me. I had to speak up and be my own advocate. My spouse and I were music perf were performing on summer stages, and even though that was wonderful and enjoying it so much, I kept my blood draws going and I watched them sinking lower and lower and at one point an oncologist said to me Shirley you have four to six months to live that was my lowest point so we consulted with some renowned specialists and one oncologist said to me Shirley you need a biomarker test it's possible you have a mutation so that was my next step Certainly, I appreciate you sharing that. So with that, you being told that uh, about the testing, 
What role did that play in your treatment then? Well, it was just a routine appointment that I had with my oncologist, and he handed me the paper and said, Shirley, something new has come up. This is a mutation, and it's IDH1. And I said, what is that? What does it mean? And he said, it means that your disease is progressing. What I didn't realize at the time was that was a good thing. That was a major turning point in my 10-year journey because it allowed my oncology team to identify a target and design a treatment plan that was specific to my own disease. And I always say I was in the right place the right time with the right mutation. Dr. Stein, what role, I mean, we, we appreciate Shirley hearing her experience and her conversation with her oncologist, but what role does mutational testing have in the cancer diagnosis like AML? Yeah, so, you know, like Shirley said, uh, mutational profiling, which, which has a couple of other names that you might hear, a patient might hear, molecular profiling, biomarker testing, it's really, really important when it comes to understanding and treating acute myeloid leukemia. Because in acute myeloid leukemia, we've identified a number of specific mutations for which there are specific therapies that target those mutations. Like in Shirley's case, where uh, this IDH1 mutation was identified, that actually occurs in up to 10% of patients with acute myeloid leukemia, and it offers the oncologist the opportunity to design a targeted treatment approach that really goes after that specific mutation. So I think as a general rule, it's important for patients to talk to their physicians, whether they've got AML, whether they have any other sort of cancer, about whether mutational mm -hmm. profiling has been performed, because figuring out what the mutations are is really so critical in 2022 to design the right treatment plan for a patient's disease, and in our case, AML. And that's why these conversations are so important. So, Dr. Stein, when it comes to our audience, what questions should they ask if they have been diagnosed with a cancer like AML? So it's really important, just like Shirley did. Whenever I, I hear, um, when I'm hearing Shirley, I, I'm so inspired by what she's saying. It's really important to advocate for yourself and talk to your oncology team and ask, you know, are you going to be testing for specific mutations? When are you going to be doing that test? How long is it going to take to receive the results? And most importantly, you know, how are those results going to affect the treatment options I have and my treatment regimen? You can actually learn a little bit more about this by going to this website, surveyor.us backslash biomarker testing, S-E-R-V-I-E-R dot U-S backslash biomarker testing. Love that. Love that. Well, Dr. Stein, Shirley, thank you so much for sharing this great information. We'll make sure that we link that, that website up for our audience here. And it goes without saying, the two of you are welcome back on the program anytime. Thank Thanks you. so much. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live, part of our News Week and News segment here at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. Let's go make today amazing. Take care.